that's classified as a low risk because this is going to be less questions asked by underwriters and banks, and it's also going to increase your approval odds for your business, which makes everything a heck of a lot easier. Now, having the right industry classification code is so important. We were working with the business owner who was facing constant denials. The minute that he made the switch into the right industry specific for his business, he was able to go from $0 in business credit to $175,000 in working capital and counting. So that one switch literally made all of the difference. Now, the reason this is so important is because this is one of the main metrics banks use to mitigate risk when they're looking at your entity. So this is something that you don't just wanna put on the back burners. You wanna pay close attention to how your business is categorized because depending on how that business is bucketed is the options of funding that your business is going to have and it's also the threshold of risk that, that the bank is willing to take specific with your line of work. So again, if they don't have a lending appetite for your industry, they're going to deny you altogether, regardless of how good your credit is or how much revenue you're bringing in. And because this is so important, I am going to grade industry classification codes at an S. Next up, we have a business phone line. Now, this is a phone line associated with your business. Banks are all about seeing your business set up properly. And one of the easiest ways that they can identify that is by a business owner having a personal line and having a business line properly separated. So the phone line that's associated specifically to your business is what's used inside of the database. And so when banks and when lenders are going into the directories, they're able to see, okay, this one phone line is solely attached to this business, meaning it's not just a person and it's not just a business like it's literally just for this now even though having a phone line for your business is important because it obviously helps you look more professional and it also helps separate a personal call from a business call i've still seen a ton of business owners get approved for business credit lines even when using their own personal cell when opening up a business bank account and when applying for business credit and because of that i am going to grade this at a c because it's just not going to move the needle for you like everything else we've been talking about. Next, we have the business name. A business name is the legal name used when setting up your LLC or your corporation. Now, picking the right business name is important, not just because it separates us from our competitors or it's fantastic for branding, but this is also something that banks are looking closely into. The business name, like an industry classification code, go hand in hand. And so I've seen banks turn down like well-ran businesses with legit revenue, strong profiles, just because the business was maybe in an area that they didn't want to lend to. So sometimes I've seen an instance where they don't want to touch real estate businesses. And so if you have house flipping or if you have land development inside of a business name, regardless of how the credit profile is structured for the business owner and how much revenue they have coming in, banks are like, no, we're not gonna take that risk. So this is why I typically recommend my clients when you're picking a name for your entity, you want to try to pick a name that's generic and nothing that raises red flags. I like to play with names like your own personal name, LLC, or the initials of your first name, last name, or the initials of all the partners, business management or business LLC or enterprise, and I like to keep it as generic as possible. So that way it's not screaming a red flag to the bankers and to the eyes of the lender. So this is what you want to keep in mind as you're picking a name for your LLC or if you're renaming your business altogether, keep that in mind because it could mean the difference between an approval or an instant denial. And because I know that, I am going to rate this at an A. The next one we're breaking down is the business address. This is where the business is established geographically. Now, where a business owner decides to open up their business is completely up to them. This can be Wyoming, Delaware, Texas, Nevada. Some people pick different states, specific states, to avoid maybe paying more in taxes. Now, regardless of where you decide to open up your business, there's three types of business addresses that you can use. 